y'all, it's Mary, and it is Thursday at 1 p.m., I think, yep. So that means it is time for a YouTube video and another fun card. So let me just be sure that I am transmittalating over here off on the side, because otherwise, what is the point? All right, here we go. Hey, Sylvia, appreciate you joining me today, and uh, I hope you're having a good day. Okay, I'm just going to move this up. It looks like I'm a little bit low in the screen there, so we'll push some stuff out the way. So my card today uses a fun little stamp set. It's actually a new bundle, but I'm only using the stamp set portion. It's the Have a Hoot bundle, and you can see all of the totally adorable, hi Faith, totally adorable images, and I do love the font. You know, if you haven't figured it out, I'm a Comic Sans person. That's the font I like. And this one sort of reminds me of that. I, I like kind of that that kind of fun font. Um, but you can see what is kind of fun about it is it covers both Halloween with this image and this image and this image. And, of course, the sentiment. And it also covers Christmas. Merry Christmas. And look at this cute little one with these little, all these fun little owls right there. Hey, Joan. Hey, Barbara. Hi, Lenny. Appreciate you joining today. Um, but it also comes with the Pika Hoot dies. I didn't use them today. I did fussy cut some owls, but I wanted a close cut, not a, a cut with a border. So that's why I did the fussy cutting. But you can see it actually cuts out the image with the um, mistletoe and it cuts out the actually it goes like this sorry make it look like it's not working the little guy with his cape over his mouth and it also cuts out the little owl and his spider how cute also you get a spider web and some these could be boughs these could also be antlers i think this could be an antler pretty easily if you cut this out in Mm, crumb cake or early espresso you could make little owl antlers and then of course it also cuts out the multiple owl image there which i think is fun so it's a fun little bundle to get in the new august to Sept uh, december 2020 mini catalog all right so i'm gonna put that away because we aren't using it today hi karen appreciate you joining hi terry hi donna appreciate you taking time and donna don we got two donnas so sorry about that um, hi <laughs> Karen. Yeah, the one I have on my blog is sort of like Comic Sans, but not really. So it's it's good enough. Hi Chris from Aiken. Ah, dri horse driving country. Okay, so this is the card, and we're gonna do a couple of fun things. This uses uh, Tis the Season DSP, and I've got. I'm not sure if you can tell, but the card front. I actually have a panel that is embossed in the woodland embossing folder. And then on the inside, I just stamped the little uh, mistletoe and Merry Christmas. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I've done a little bit of pre-cutting. Not a lot, but a little. I thought you might want to have a little another gander at the new cutting machine, so I didn't cut a bunch of things out. Disregard the balloons. It's just a piece of paper that I had waiting. And let's go ahead and see if we can do some, some hooking together. So I've got two of my designs from the uh, Tis the Season DSP, and I'm just going to mat them on two mats of Daffodil Delight. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right quick. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> hey, Karen. Yeah, the, the die set makes it really fun. Um, it just didn't, didn't do what I needed it to do today, so that is why I didn't use it. But I love a set that gives you dies that you have the option of using or not using, right? I'm also pretty enamored with this Tis the Season DSP with all the greens. It's got garden green and shaded spruce, and it's got real red and cherry cobbler. So you can really kind of get busy with the reds and the greens for Christmas. I like it. And it's kind of an old-fashioned, it, it's just kind of an old-fashioned DSP, and I like it pretty good. Okay, so I'm going to set these aside, and what we're going to do is pull out the embossing, the cutting and embossing machine, and we're going to start by, um, we need to emboss a piece of basic black in the woodland folder, and then I need to cut this piece that I have already uh, stamped, 
But let me see if I can fix that, because if I can't fix it, I'm going to have to stamp it a den. I'm going to have to do it a den. See where I made a little... I got too carried away with it. And I got a little smudgy smeary. I think I can fix it. Thank you, Mono Sand Eraser. Yeah. 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 Okay. Let's bring this skim over. That's what I'm calling him, skim. That's, uh, you know, I'm an I'm a acronym kind of person. It's my military background. I can't help it very much. So this is skim. Meet skim. All right. So you are going to get, when you get your skim, you're going to get uh, what comes in with the machine is the die uh, plate the plate for the basic plates the bottom plate and then you get a die cutting thin adapter and then you get a couple of um, acrylic pads and you also get these are the cutting pads that you're used to seeing and you also get pad number four which is for embossing so we got a couple of different sandwiches. Let's go ahead and um, let's cut first, shall we? So to cut, I'm going to use um, plate number one, plate number two, a, a cutting plate, and then my cardstock. And I'm using the stitch shapes dies, and I'm using the next to largest circle die, and I'm just going to place it there. Now, we do have a magnetic plate. It just isn't available yet, so this is not magnetic, which means I want to be careful putting that down so that it stays where I need it. And that's just going to go through like butter. Sorry for the wiggling of the, of the camera. Pam, you're from Squim, Washington. That is my dream place to live. That is where I want to live. I have a Zillow search, and it reminds me of places that are for sale, so I'm a little envious. Hey, Carol. Kathy, you're welcome for the nickname. You're welcome to use it. Hi, Daryl. I I wasn't a cheerleader. I was I was so far from being a cheerleader. No, no, no. No, no, no. I was... Are you ready? Are you sitting down? I was the um, president of the Latin Club. That, so you've got cheerleader, president of Latin Club. Never the twain shall meet. I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, okay, so now we're going to change up our sandwich. We're still going to start with the, um, the plate number one. Okay, so I need to clarify something. Yesterday when I did my sneak peek look of, at this, I mentioned that when you are using embossing folders, you want to send the embossing folder through the machine hinge first. So this is the hinge, as you might imagine it. Okay, this is the hinge. You want it to go first. And I got some questions about that because some people have been told to send it through open end first. So I called demonstrator support and here is the actual word. Prior to this machine coming out, it was kind of urban legend, tribal drum beats that said you sent the, the hinge through first. We were actually told that when the first 3D embossing folders came out, we were told that when it was demonstrated at a Stampin' Up! event that you should send it through hinge first. But there's never been anything documented to say to do that. It kind of makes sense if you think about it. If you send it through open end first, your cardstock can wiggle around and screw up your image. Also, it can do some torquing of the embossing folder that can create damage to the hinge end of the folder. More critical with the 3D embossing folders than with the regular. But take a look at these words right here. This is the plate number one where it describes the sandwiches. And if you'll notice, it is now um, codified that you need to insert the embossing folders hinge first, okay? So now there's no question, send it through hinge first. Okay, and done. That is the end of my little lecture about embossing folders today. All right, here we go. I am just sticking my piece. This is a piece of basic black. It is four and a quarter by five and a half, the same as my card front. And I am placing it in my embossing folder. And then I will send it through. And so the sandwich is plate number one, cutting plate. Uh, wait, 
Yes, this is for a regular folder. Okay, so plate number one, cutting plate, folder with cardstock, and cutting plate. If I was using a 3D folder, the, the uh, sandwich is just plate number one, the folder with the cardstock, and the gray cutting pad number four. And it's very handy because they give you the numbers here on the on the uh, plate number one, and each plate that you get has a number on it now. So it's pretty darn straightforward. Not very easy to mess it up. I mean, if anybody's going to, it'll be me, I assure you. But it seems like it ought to be pretty hard to mess up. Okay, so there we go. Ah, Daryl, I see what you did there. The bundle is a hoot today. Very funny. Uh-huh. Okay, now I'm putting skim away because we're done with it for a minute. And let's pull out our embossed cardstock. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just making sure, first off, that I put my trees straight up and down. And because sometimes embossing kind of... Um, stretches the fibers of the paper, it can kind of make it a little bit different than you thought you wanted. So I'm just gonna come back and make sure that I've got a good straight cut and a good straight piece. So it took just a little bit off, no big. No big. So that was four and a quarter by five and a half. Yep, and that was still good, okay. So let's go ahead and set that aside. The other option, of course, that you can do is to cut your cardstock bigger than you need, emboss it, and then cut it down to size, okay? Totally up to you how you want to do that. Now I'm going to use liquid glue and adhere this to the front of my card base. Yeah, Catherine, I really like the new machine myself. It's very, very smooth, got very nice action, feels good to use. Um, I like it a lot. All right, we're just going to line this up with the top and the sides. Now, some of you may be asking why I didn't just emboss the front of the card base. You certainly can, but I have discovered that it tends to make your card front a little wonky and kind of weak. You know, does weak make sense when you talk about cardstock? If that makes sense to you, then you know what I mean. And if it doesn't, then ask and I will explain it. Now, this made this a little bit rough, so I'm just going to use a sanding block to kind of smooth it up here. There we go. Okay. And this is a Tim Holtz thing that I got probably at Michael's. All right. So there we go. Now, I'm going to take my two embossed panels and adhere them also with liquid glue at my jaunty angle on my embossed card front. Easy peasy. This is one, I gotta say, these angled panels are one of my favorite design elements. I really, really like them a lot. All right. Yes, like it will tear. Uh-huh, it does. It, it weakens the structure of the, of the cardstock, Daryl. And so not only do you risk it tearing, but you risk it not being stout enough to really still be the front of a card, which is why if you just emboss a same color panel and then adhere it on it, you will get the same effect without doing those things to it. Okay, so now before I get to ribbon and whatnot, let's go ahead and make our little owl guys, shall we? Okay. So here's what I did. I took a piece of Gilded Autumn. You can tell this is not gilded, but it is one of my favorite, you see on the other side, one of my favorite DSP designs in that. And I took my same owls and in Tuxedo Black, I am stamping the image onto that DSP. Yeah, every once in a while I like to put the black with the colors because I just think it's kind of fun. You know, I, I like the I like the contrast of the black with it. It becomes a nice little neutral. Okay, so in the ways of 
women of my age, I am now hot where I was cold two seconds ago. So I'm going to stall a little bit, let my tuxedo black dry while I take off my sweater. And then I'm going to fussy cut these little owl dudes. Okay. Now we're, what we're doing here is paper piecing. So I'm going to fussy cut, but I'm not going to get real het up about, for example, all of his little hair licks and stuff, because it's, it will be on the stamped image that's already there. That was like the worst grammar ever, but I think you know what I mean. I hope you do. Okay, so I'm just going to cut out these little owl dudes. And we will instantly get owl colored owls without using any coloring devices. We're using cutting devices, not coloring devices. So if you all ordered shares from me, the shares should arrive today. Um, I am probably not going to work until midnight trying to cut them. And so I, it's very likely I will not get to cutting until tomorrow afternoon, but I will get them out by Monday. You can count on that. And if things go as I'm hoping they will, I'll actually get them to the post office on Saturday. Okay? So I will let you know via my posting when they go out. All right. So I'm just kind of cutting his little self out here. And like I said, I'm not getting too head up about his hair licks. Did you know that owls have hair licks? Who knew? Who knew? Oh, you guys, speaking of owls, we've got an owl, that, a couple probably, that live in the woods around our house. That's kind of what's cool. I love the fact that I live not, not 20 minutes from the airport, but I have woods around my house that have owls living in them. And sometimes in the evening after we've fed and we're taking our last walk up the road to let Finney get a little bit of energy and, you know, other stuff out of him, we'll hear him. And he's just sitting there talking. And every once in a while, if you're careful, you can actually see him. Okay, so there's my little owl dudes. And I'm going to use a little liquid glue. No, I didn't have a Christmas sweater on. I had a little chill. You know how it works out where you're hot and then, you're, then you have a little chill? Yes, this is actually... Um, Amy's favorite thing is this card with all the fussy cutting. Wait till I fussy cut an eyeball. Yes, you'll know that was really her thing. All right, so I'm just going to place these little guys and look. Bing, bada, boom, bada, bam. All of a sudden, I've got owls. Now, I want his eyes to be yellow because... Brown eyes? No, that's not even a thing. But I can't really color his eyes with my marker because it's already brown. So I am going to use my Daffodil Delight Stampin' Right marker to color his little feet. Their little feet right there. <clears throat> and then I've actually already stamped the image again just on a little piece of Daffodil Delight. And I'm going to cut the eyeballs and beak out. That's not nearly as hard as it's going to look, I promise. I mean, you know, it's, it's not inconsiderable cutting, but it's not horrible. All right, and I'm not going to cut his eyelids because his eyelids should absolutely be brown. And I'm just going to go straight across there like that. Now they look like little glasses, little owl glasses, little tiny owl glasses. Now, if you have owls around you that have brown eyes, you don't have to do this step. <clears throat> and no doubt, I have not gotten close enough. I have not got close enough to see whether my owls have brown or yellow eyes, but I'm just assuming they have yellow because that's how you see them in all the pictures. Well, all the cartoons. Okay. Not everything. <clears throat> all right. Hang on. Hold your breath. Everybody hold your breath that this works out the way I wanted it to. And it did. Okay. So there's his eyes. 
now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of clean up my fussy cut. Hey, Pat. Appreciate you joining. <clears throat> just like the owl on the eyeglass commercial. Exactly like him. All right, so now I'm just going to clean up my lines. And you kind of want to do this whenever you're paper piecing. Take a, a light colored marker. Light, that's like colored, not light. And make sure that your outline is still visible on your fussy cut. This goes back to my, my suggestion that you have a marker for each of your colors. Which means when you buy a color of ink, you want to buy <clears throat> the pad, the refill, and the marker. Not a requirement. There's no rule that says it, but I can assure you it's a nice darn thing to have. Okay? Because this would have looked really weird if I hadn't had black to outline with. Okay? Alright. There we go. And these guys are done. I'm going to use my shaded spruce marker to color the little leaves. This is mistletoe, in case you didn't know. Mistletoe, mistletoe. I wonder who decided that you had to kiss under mistletoe. Does anybody know? I don't even know. All right, and then we'll put color these pine boughs. I mean, this is obviously my owls because they're in pine trees, and that's what I've got is pine trees. All righty there. Okay. The hard part is done. We're going to put this on our card front now. And I'm going to use a little bit of the um, 3 8 inch, I think it's 3 8 yes, yeah, 3 8 inch sheer ribbon. It's real red. And I'm just going to make a, make a triple loop like this. And I'm going to do that by making a strip of stamp and seal. And then I can just adhere it, double it back. And then, of course, this would be triple it back. <laughs> you got your double back and you got your triple back. And then cut it like that. And then we'll put some Stampin' Dimensionals. And I'm going to use my black ones because I like it. Can I hold them up close? Yes, I can. Uh, I assume you mean these? There. That good? Okay. I'll hold it up again when we get get them on the card if you need me to. And then I'm just going to put some of these dimensionals on the back of my owl people. Okay. And we've only got a little more fussy cutting to do, but it's a sentiment and it's really easy, so gosh anybody can do it you're welcome Kathy thank you Donna all right so we're going to straighten up the card so that these little guys get on here straight hold our ribbon down and put him on like that okay now he can set aside for just a second and I'm gonna pull out my stamp apotamus and we're going to stamp that stamp potamus grabbed that roll of glue dots. Did you see that? It was crazy. And I'm just going to put a piece of Daffodil Delight in my Stamparatus. And we're going to stamp all I want, all I want for Christmas. Like that. In Tuxedo Black. Yeah, Barbara, this is a fun little set. I really, really like it. Don't forget that it has a bundled die set. You're going to want that. Okay, I'm just going to stamp that a couple of times so I get a nice dark image. One more. One more because I can. And then I'm going to let that set for a second so that it dries. And while it, it, while it is doing that, Let's clean off my other stamp.
real good. Make sure it's good and clean. Okay. Now what I want to do is stamp. I'm going to stamp just the mistletoe on the front of my envelope. And I'm going to do that using the rubber, the ink to rubber technique, the marker to rubber technique. Okay, so I'm just going to ink that up. And the first time you do this, huff on it and just go ahead and do a stamp to make sure it's going to stamp the way you want. And it is, so I'm happy with that. So we'll just ink this up. You could put this on your Stamparatus if you wanted, but I think there's a relatively reasonable chance you'll get a good image the first time you do it with this one, so that's not required. Don't forget when you do a uh, marker to rubber, after you ink up the, the image, you need to blow on it like you were making a condensation on a window. And I'm going to stamp that on the corner like that. Perfect. And we're going to do that again on the inside, but not until I have a sentiment on the inside. So we're going to hold off on that. Okay. All right. This should be dry now. Okay. Paper snips. And then we're just going to cut this out in three lines. We're going to have is you. And the Christmas line. And I, I went ahead and let it be a little curvy right there. Because it's more fun. What's fun about this font is that you can get a little bit busy. And you don't have to be so het up about the lines, the, the, the cuts being perfectly straight. It almost wants to be a little bit crookedy Mamie so that it's, so that it's a little more fun, just a little more fun, I think. That's my story and I am sticking to it. You can't make me change my mind on that. All right, there's that one. Where's the rest of you? Where's the rest of you? There you are. All I want for Christmas is you. Okay, there we go. All right, now we're going to use liquid glue. No, blends do not work on the stamps in that way, okay? It just, it just won't. It's too um, thin of ink, and it, it really doesn't like, like that at all. Okay, so we're going to start with Owl I Want, and I'm actually going to... Use liquid glue, and then I'm probably going to slide a small dimensional right there so that it's supported because it's kind of hanging off. Okay, and then we'll do this. I'm going to tip that the other way and let it kind of hang off like that. Just like that. Okay. Now, okay, let's see. Let me pull out. I'm going to use a small black dimensional and slide it under the end of that sentiment, that top sentiment, okay? Just like that. There. And now we're going to get out some of our red rhinestones. I don't know about y'all, but I would take rhinestones in pretty much every color. And yes, you can. Did you know that you can actually color your rhinestones with your blends? That is something you can do with blends. But I'm just going to use these red ones because they work with my color scheme. My color scheme. Put some of these in the mistletoe. And yeah, I think real mistletoe actually has white berries but it has red berries on my card okay so just gonna have to deal with it because I like these little red guys like this <laughs> I'm 
Alrighty. And we'll stick that there. And this little dude is done on the front. So we're going to set him aside. And we'll set our envelope aside. And then I'm going to stamp this envelope. Oh, there's my white. Okay, here we go. I found it. Don't worry. Don't panic. I found it. Good Lord. I've got everything so messy here. So messy here. Okay. Now we're going to stamp our sentiment. And we're going to stamp it in tuxedo black. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas to you. Mm -mm -mm. Am I funny as in kind of wacky or funny haha -ha? that's the question I have okay so remember my tip whenever you even if you are familiar with the stamp because you've made the, you've used the stamp a hundred times if unless it was this morning it's always not I mean it's really never bad a bad idea to make sure that everything lines up so I am lining up the bottom of my sentiment with one of the marks on my grid paper and I just want to be sure that it actually is straight and it is because truthfully the straightness of this image is dependent on one how well you put the sticker on when you built the stamp and two whether the engraved image is actually identical to where the sticker is so it is in your best interest to make sure you know where that image is going to stamp and I would do it on a scrap paper and the grid paper is the best because it also give you a visual of straight now, somebody asked me last week why I hovered, and what I'm doing is I'm kind of using my peripheral vision to line up with my grid paper on both sides to try to be sure that my sentiment has some shot of being straight. Okay? Cool, funny. That's the kind of funny I like to be. And then when you put your image down, just hold it for a few beats and pick it up. And nine and a half times out of ten, it'll be just right now to finish this off I'm going to pull that uh, mistletoe back out and I'm going to ink it up with my marker like so and because I've been stamping with it I have a very good idea that this is really going to go where I put it so I'm going to stick it right there over the sentiment and I'm just gonna hold the beat and perfect we'll take it I'll take that for 200 Alex okay now I'm going to stall a minute and take a drink of my drink and you know what that means if you make 10 cards yes one of them isn't gonna be right that is a true statement but that's where you use that other side of the cardstock all right, so yes, I'm taking a little break to take a little drink and to let my ink dry. Before I start coloring, because I don't want to color until my ink is dry. Because, you know, that's just not a good idea. You just shouldn't do that, okay? Note to self, always color when your ink is dry. And when you can find your pen. Okay, so I'm, gonna I'm doing the envelope first. And I'm using shaded spruce for the lips, the lips, these are lips. And we'll, then I'm going to use my real red marker on the envelope flap to color these berries. Not, not, this is not the flap, this is still just the envelope. I mean, come on. Anybody can see that is the envelope, not the flap. All right, and then we will color these leaves on the inner liner. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and color these berries, but I'm also going to add some more rhinestones on here. Because, you know, I don't think there's a rule that says you can't have rhinestones on the inner liner. And even if there is, I am breaking it, baby. 
Look at me, a rogue, a roué. Y'all know roué, right? <sighs> Captain Rhett Butler was a roué. All right. Okay, so now let's uh, just use a little liquid glue and put him on his Daffodil Delight. Thank you, Pam. I appreciate it. I was tickled with this little card. I really, really like this little owl set. It is too stinking cute. I love this one. I just, I'm going to be using this. Just get ready. This little guy right here, he's too cute. He's just too cute. Like he's some kind of masked desperado who is not even sort of scary. That's what I like about this set is you could do Halloween cards that have zero scariness about them. No scariness. And those are the kinds of Halloween cards I like the best. are just fun ones that are cute and not particularly scary. Even ones that I'm trying to make scary, I can't even make scary. Because I'm just not scary. I Well, I might be scary. I suppose some people could think I'm scary, but I'm really not. They're lying. They don't know what they're talking about. See why I like that black? Isn't that cool with the Daffodil Delight? I love it. Yeah. Don't be scared to use black on a Christmas card. Just throwing that out there. Okay, so that's it. You don't have to do any more because we kind of built the card front on the front of the card. So the last piece is to put some of that pretty, um, I'm gonna even say it's cherry cobbler and real red is that plaid on the envelope flap. This is just a fussy cutting intensive card, isn't it? It's so hard. No, it's not. Not even a little bit. It's a fun little... I, I was really glad. It took me a second to come up with the idea of doing paper piecing on it. And then it took me another second to figure out the sentiment. I really... It took me a minute to get to remember the whole cut the sentiment out like like I did. I was trying to put it in a oval stitch shape and in a rectangle stitch shape. I, I just was really going off the rails. And then all of a sudden I was like, wait... Just stamp it on some Daffodil Delight and cut it out, silly girl. Okay, and there we go. One adorable Christmas card with little owl people on the front. Isn't that so cute? I love it. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the card. I hope you will add Have a Hoot and its matching Pika Hoot. Oh, and these are, look at this. This is, these are um label dies all hooked together that all kind of match each of these sentiments so you can just cut three or four labels out all at once and it cuts the ribbon tag there and a and a hole for some um for some twine so you can make tags for gifts very easily and christmas is part of the deal so think of cute little tags with these little owl people and merry christmas from all of us all right, guys, I hope I will see you uh, next on Saturday at 7 o'clock on my Stamps and Lingers Facebook page. Please check out my bundles, my special bundles. Have a Hoot is in one of those bundles. You'll go, you're going to want it. All right, guys, thank you so much for spending part of your afternoon with me. We'll see you on Saturday. Bye-bye.